Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and I'm going to do some storybook colored pencil, or some people call it no-line colored pencil, and I'm going to be using the Woodland Critters stamp set from Pretty Pink Posh. They have these cute little animals, and they've got some sweet sentiments that have both a script and a straight-up font in them, which are really fun, and I wanted to use all the animals. So I stamped them all because that's that's how I roll. And I did have some stamping fails. You'll notice that the deer got kind of blocked off by the bird. And there's a couple other errors that I made in here. But one of the fun things about doing this no line coloring look, or I call it storybook coloring because it, when you make the lines disappear this way by having them stamped really light, it makes it look more like a storybook picture, not like you've colored in a stamped image. I guess that's why I call it storybook coloring. But it also allows me to fix things in my stamping if I do this. If I'm not going to color it here on YouTube, I'll even stamp it lighter. Sometimes I do second generation stamping, so it's just barely there. And then I really have the ability to fix things. You can even get away with not masking things if you do that. But use your lightest color, whatever your lightest color is. You can use a, a light yellow or something. But here you can see I fixed his nose. I pulled his nose in front of the bird and I had the ability to do that because I'm doing this, this technique. If everything was stamped in black, it would be really hard to fix that part where I did my, my stamping goober because the bird should have been stamped last. The order that I stamp things in when I'm doing this kind of a scene is to stamp the image in the front first and then work toward the back and that's my dogs outside, sorry about them cannot seem to keep them quiet today, so they've been banished. <laughs> but I actually stamped the squirrel first. Behind that, I stamped the deer. Behind that, should have stamped the bird, but I ended up doing that the wrong way anyway. But little by little, just keep building those images toward the back, from the front to the back, and mask them out with whatever you're masking. You can use sticky notes, you can use masking papers, that kind of thing. But here what I'm doing on the, the bear is leaving a white space on his face that wasn't there in the stamp and a white belly. So you have the ability on a lot of these no line or storybook coloring images, you can change things up. You can change the direction of the ears. You can change a lot of different things because you're basically co covering up what was there in the stamp lines and you have a little more freedom. Now for a lot of people, that's too much freedom. I get that. I totally understand. But watch the hand that's holding the flower as well, because I'm going to do a, a little bit of stuff to create a hand for him to be holding. You can see a little bit of that thumb appearing. And as I added more shadows, he's got now little shapes that are holding, holding his flower. For my little squirrel here, I'm going to do him in purples. And I decided to do all of these basically, well, most of these in colors that they aren't really, because since I was going for this real fantasy look anyway, it seemed appropriate to just do crazy colors for them. And I'm using a couple different shades to achieve just a little bit of shading, not going for realism, just enough to, to give them some dimension to them. And this little bird, I am going to fix him a little bit more because I didn't notice until later that the bird now ends right where the nose is. So it almost looks like the bird has a black tip on his wing, but stay tuned for that to get fixed in a little bit as well. I'm going to use a little more of the blue over here on the left to pull that blue from just being on the bear alone to adding a little bit of it somewhere else in the card. And then the teal, I'm going to draw my bunnies over here on the right hand side in teal. So I balance my colors around the image. Even if you have the set of 150 colors, which I do in the Prismacolors, uh, not always necessary to use them all in every image that you have because it can become very disjointed and almost overly colorful. It's often a little bit easier to just pick some colors and repeat them in a few places. And here I wanted my teal to get a little brighter, so I used a secondary blue that was a little brighter over top of it because that this first blue, this 1088, is a little on the darker side, a little grayer of a color. So I just added a little bit of a brighter one. And then I'm using a really sharp pencil to add all of my eyeballs and noses. Now here's another of the areas that I had the problem. You see that line from the, um, from the trunk that went right over top of my my hedgehog there. 
I'm going to fix that by adding texture onto the hedgehog. And I made it in a color that worked once I started just trying to test and see what it would take to match the depth of that color that stamped over top of it because my masking just kind of blew it there. And that's another of those things that you can fix when you're using this no line color pencil look because the inks are so light. If I had made that boo-boo and I was stamping in black ink, I would have been in really bad trouble trying to figure out how to fix that. And it's a whole lot easier to do it when you're working with really light ink colors. So now I'm going to add a lot of, you know, these bright yellows and oranges in the, the little stump, the little tree stump, and then start carrying a little bit more of that blue around the image and pulling that color around different places giving a little more strength to some of my my shapes and just kind of squinting at an image will help you to see where you need more contrast if you have more in some areas than in others it can help to just guide you as to which areas need a little bit more work realized i had forgotten the little nut that he's holding so i colored that in the same colors as the tree stump and the flower to carry those colors all the way around and then I decided I wanted to add just a little bit of a scene and not a lot because color pencil, you may know, takes a while. So I started just creating a little line of trees behind them instead of an entire full scene on the whole card because that, that could take quite, quite a bit of time. So I'm doing two different greens. I started with a lighter green down at the bottom and then I'm going from the, the tree line, which is just scallops. It doesn't have to be fancy trees just some scallop shapes and let that blend slowly down into the lighter color all the way down. This did take a while, so you can always skip that portion if you're create, re, trying to recreate this card, but I think it really sets everything off. And what it did do is help me to notice when I got over to the bird where the bird wing went straight into the nose of the deer, which was a little bit weird. I was like, okay, I gotta fix that. So I just extended the wing a little bit. And since I didn't have a black line there for the stamped bird, I was able to fix that. To finish off my card, I just popped it using some dimensional adhesive onto a pink card base, made it a square card. So it would really tighten up the area, that empty space above and below and added my sentiment in that to make it a really sweet card, really simple. When you put this much love in the coloring, you don't have to do much else to embellish the card. If you enjoy this video, please click that like button. You can share it with your friends on your social media. You can leave a comment down below. I love to read your comments even though I don't have time to reply to everything. I do click the like button if I see what you have written. So love to hear what you have to say and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.